Yo, what's good? It's your boy Mixtape Moff, and today I'm going to hit y'all with a flashback review of the Jizza Genius's 1999 album entitled Beneath the Surface. Let's get to it. Alright, so Beneath the Surface, which dropped in June of 1999, is the Jizza's third solo album. It was a project that for many failed to live up to the expectations following his magnum opus, Liquid Source, from 1995. The main criticism directed at Beneath the Surface was the lack of RZA involvement. He only contributed one beat, but that was pretty much par for the course for RZA involvement on Wu solo projects in the late 90s. For some perspective, hip-hop had changed a great deal in the four years following Liquid Swords. The Wu-Tang dominance began to wane slightly by 1999, while other crews like No Limit, Rockefeller, Aftermath, and Rough Riders began to take the forefront. RZA was no longer producing full-length solo projects for group members. They were lucky to get one to two uh, RZA beats at this time. Consequently, Wu members were forced to look outside for Wu-Tang affiliate producers uh, and just outside beat makers in general. However, despite what people may have thought about the beats on Beneath the Surface, one thing is clear, and that is that Jizza was in his prime as a lyricist in 1999. I mean, there are quotables upon quotables on this thing. Sure, a lot of the lyrical content on Liquid Swords was mind-blowing, but I think a strong argument could be made that Jizza had improved as a lyricist uh, by the time of Beneath the Surface. But this album contains 18 tracks and lasts 46 minutes, so despite the lengthy track list, this album is still well under the hour mark. I feel this project is a little less straightforward and a little less street than Liquid Swords. Even the title and the cover art suggest something a little more cerebral, maybe scientific and possibly esoteric. But with that being said, let me go ahead and hit y'all with this track by track breakdown. The opener is an intro that contains what sounds like the beginning of a Discovery Channel documentary or even a preview for a blockbuster film. Immediately following is a suspenseful instrumental by Arabian Night. Now this beat will be used again on the outro, but with people rapping on it. The first actual song is Amplified Sample, produced by DJ Mathematics. It's a dusty, neck-snapping soul sample with a simple piano chord. We get one verse repeated twice with a hook. Uh, the lyrical content is very imaginative and otherworldly. I'll be honest, I wasn't exactly sure uh, what he was getting at, but I knew he was performing lyrical sorcery on this beat. Then I rose from the soil, the sun blackened, then came rap bazaars, left tracks and scars, apparent brightness of exploding stars. Track three, Beneath the Surface, was produced by Inspected Deck. It's a soulful loop with a polished and smooth feel. There's sort of a biblical and regal quality to the instrumental. It's very Sons of Man-like. While Jizz's verse is great, it is Killer Priest who completely dominates with his heavy biblical imagery. I dwell in the hills like Gandhi, been in the presence of mad peasants and old kings who sold everything on a quest for God's divine, slept in caves to get a clear mind. Literally his entire verse was a quotable. I definitely feel this is a top five Killer Priest verse of all time. The hook sung by Rez is smooth, but different. It was kind of futuristic sounding for 1999, uh, but eccentric enough to be on a Jizza album nonetheless. What follows are two skits back to back. Now, I never completely understood the reason for this. One was narrated by Angela Yee. The other is a new skit on the NYPD authorizing a shoot to kill policy. I gotta admit, I did not think these two skits brought a ton of value to this album, uh, especially the one with Angela Yee. Sure, I get that Jizza was trying to do his own thing and possibly branch away from the mafia or kung fu skits that accompany most Wu-Tang albums, but these just seem like a series of half-baked ideas. Track six is Crash Your Crew featuring Old Dirty Bastard. It is a high-energy banger uh, produced by John the Baptist. The frantic horns and powerful drums give it almost a mosh pit-like energy. You know, it makes you want to get on some high school shit and start punching people in their faces for living. Hope y'all caught that Mob Deep reference. Old Dirty just provides the hook, but it is delivered in the most animated and aggressive way possible. Jizza has a knack on this album for setting off verses in a memorable way. 
Let's drink wine from the purest grape vine and rhyme. I'm a motherfucking mind. Metal shine, light blind, cut the mic line. Catch juice from the lamp hole. 15, 20 inch woofers blow the manhole. Now track seven, Breaker Breaker, was a single that actually has some commercial appeal. The beat provided by Arabian Night is a piece of orchestral boom bap with these lavish strings. Jizza just glides effortlessly on top of this instrumental. He's Schooling the premature MCs, just demonstrating why he was one of the most technically proficient in 1999. They are indeed battle raps, but they're cleverly penned like a novel written 400 years ago. The immortality of my fame is the measure of others' torture, burnt offer from a flaming author, the falconer who flies enough birds for the chase, strictly excel in what is excellence with grace. So the significance was not the vulgar applause of interest, but the feeling to exit, completion of a sentence. With age and experience, my reason ripens. I strike on you Vikings, slash like a hyphen. It's just God level MC and plain and simple. Next is high price, small reward. It's a tension filled gritty beat by mathematics. It's more of a straightforward street banger about the consequences of being in the game. Just a raps, kill for that Bushwick and Halsey broad. Obviously a move like that he views as something ill-advised and a high price to pay for a small reward. As much as I like Jizz's verse, I think it was Master Killer who was the highlight of this record. Broken homes breathe seeds of no guidance, left to wander the streets and experiment with devilish men. Right after is Hip Hop Fury, produced by Arabian Night. This has a very unique keyboard styled melody. It sounds like high pitched swirling bells on top of crunchy drums. It's a whole vibe. The hook provided by RZA is high energy. Now this is a posse cut featuring Hell Reza, Timbo King, and Dreddy Kruger. While I feel all these MCs did their thing, it was really the beat that I found to be the most interesting on this track. This is followed up by another unnecessary skit that I viewed to be as bad as some of the ones on the Nostradamus album, if you remember those skits. Track 11 is the RZA produced 1112. We get a synthetic string arrangement that's very suspenseful and dramatic. It's a type of beat that could drive you insane if you listen to it in a dark room. Jizza sets it off boldly with Bobby said fuck spending 50 on a whip. Buy a quick mental flip. He got a thousand tracks stored on the chip. Said he had mad toys to make noise. He split and separate drums like asteroids. This features Master Killer, Killer Priest, and Nigeri Earth, all of whom went in and lyrically demolished this Slept on Rizabi. Track 12 is the only skit which I feel truly made sense on this album. It's a brief new skit by Angela Yee who speaks on uh, the gun violence that is affecting children in cities across America. This transitions perfectly into the Arabian Night produced victim. Jizza speaks on the dire conditions facing inner city black youth over a somber guitar back beat. It's a conceptual record with some compelling observations on city life. I suppose one could draw parallels between this and his classic Cold World single from 1995, but sonically and instrumentally they are nothing alike. This beat, while effective enough for the storytelling, uh, pales in comparison to the sonic brilliance found on uh, Rizzo's production on Cold World. I really appreciated the detailed storytelling and vivid imagery here, but the production was just okay. The following record is Publicity, which has an instantly recognizable beat by Mathematics. The violins are prominent and foreboding. It's just a haunting and sinister soundscape. On this record, Jizza tells a story while cleverly using the names of all these different magazines. Conceptually, it's in a vein similar to his label song from Liquid Sword. This is only one verse, but it's very hard hitting and creative. Who be the first to catch his beat down? My rap pages be the source. Ego trip remain victory and no loss. In my opinion, I always felt this song was just as stand out as labels. Right after is feel like an enemy. Uh, this has the explosive energy of Crash Your Crew, but a beat that isn't as interesting. It's a mathematics production, which is effective enough, but in my opinion, it 
came across as just a standard Wu-Tang affiliate beat, uh, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not overly memorable. Interestingly enough, this song doesn't have any rapping from the Jizza. It's essentially a Sons of Man track. What comes next is string play like this, like that, featuring Method Man. The beat provided by Arabian Night has some playful strings that are very fitting for the title. This track is largely regarded as a follow-up or part two to Shadow Boxing, although that's not entirely accurate as the Jizza and Meth did as high as Wu-Tang gets two years earlier on Wu-Tang Forever. Needless to say, there was some anticipation for this record. Now, do I feel it delivers in the strong way that uh, Shadow Boxing did? Absolutely not. However, it does feature solid verses from Meth and Jizza who flow buttery smooth over this upbeat string arrangement. It just doesn't have the edge to it that Shadow Boxing had, and the Meth verse isn't quite as rewind worthy. It's still a solid record, however. The album begins to wrap up with the mathematics produced Mike Trippin. It's a dreamy and glorious boom bap beat that's rugged yet smooth. Jizza flows gracefully over this more luxurious production. His verbal darts are so precise and imaginative. This thing comes to a close with the outro, which has La the Dark Man and Timbo King uh, rapping over the same Arabian Night beat found on the opener. Uh, the verses here are brief, but I could appreciate the grimy and rough around the edges aesthetic to this closing. Overall, I give this album a rating of four mics, probably a light to a decent four, so anywhere between a four and a 4.3. Do I think this album is a classic? No, I do not. And I say this because I vividly remember listening to this album in the context of when it had dropped in 1999. If this album is a classic, then the question I would ask is, what is Liquid Sword? a double classic, a triple classic. See where I'm going with this? Sure, the album is slept on and underappreciated. The lyrics from Jizza are superbly crafted and his bars are at times impeccable. However, for an album to be a classic for me, the beats have to at least be on the same level of the lyrics. Well, not entirely, but close enough. You know, do I feel these beats work for the most part? Yeah, because none of them are whack and uh, a couple are even exceptional. With that being said, I just didn't hear the same sonic brilliance that was found on RZA's work from 1993 to 1997. Nonetheless, it's a strong follow-up that I consider to be the best Wu-Tang solo project from 1999. I mean, this is better than a Mobilarity, a Golden Arms, and Inspector Deck solo by far. At the end of the day, it's definitely a project worth revisiting for Jizz of fans and hardcore woo heads in general. My favorite tracks include Crash Your Crew, Breaker Breaker, High Price, Small Reward, 1112, Publicity, and Mike Trippin'. Let me know what you thought about this album in the comment section below. It's your boy Mixtape Moth. I'm signing out, but be sure to hit that like button and please subscribe. As always, it's peace and blessing. The Jizza Beneath the Surface, one.